This video is HIPAA compliant. I'm filming today's video from my gear closet. I'm not sure how happy I'm going to be doing it this way, but here goes anyway. Uh, today's video is going to be about uh, hiking with diabetes. And really, this video could also be about just hiking with um, all kinds of uh, physical conditions. So uh, we'll get to some of that uh, later. But to begin with, let's just deal with diabetes. Uh, there, there are really two types of diabetes, type 1, which is insulin dependent, and type 2, uh, which is insulin resistant. Um, and I'm kind of a, um, uh, an unusual thing here with uh, regard to diabetes. I'm what the doctors call type 1 and a half, uh, which is a thing, but I had never heard of it and, um, until I was diagnosed with it. And, and now, of course, I'm living with it and dealing with it. But basically, uh, what type 1 and a half is, is I am uh, insulin resistant and um, about to be, um, not impending in the next few days, but, but eventually I'm going to be insulin um, uh, dependent. So what that means for me <clears throat> is that I take medication uh, for, for diabetes like any type 2 diabetic would, but I'll, I'm also on insulin. So I, I take a, a once daily insulin injection. Now the disclaimer, I am not a doctor. This is not medical advice. This is merely a description of what I do to manage diabetes while I'm on the trail. That's, that's all that's going on here. So if, if you're diabetic or you have any other condition and you're looking at how to deal with that while on the trail, consult your doctor. Talk to your doctor first. Like I said, I, I deal with really with three ad, uh, additional things as far as um, the, the regular treatment uh, of diabetes while I'm on the trail. Um, I take I take medication and I take one of those old school kind of kind of old person uh, dispensers for medication where you all your medication is in there by each day and so on Tuesday you, you flip it open you take out that medication for that day and, and take it that I have found that that's a great way to to keep it uh, whether it's just a weekend trip or if it's for um, a longer trip and if it's for just a, a shorter trip, it also, I can use those spaces to keep ibuprofen or uh, sleep aid. The, the insulin that I take, of course, is in a, um, is in a, uh, a tube, and I have to take uh, the insulin and I have to take the needles. And I take, uh, like if I'm gonna be gone uh, three nights, then I would only need to take three needles, but I take a couple of extra just in case because you just never know, and if I'm in the process of uh, trying to use the needle, if I drop it, obviously I'm not now going to use that needle. So I need to have a couple of extra just in case I do something dumb uh, like dropping it. Now for my food, the essentially the diet that I've been on um, since I was diagnosed, which has now been almost 15 years, so it's, it's been a, a pretty long time. Uh, the way the way my diet works is. Uh, when I'm not engaged in activities that re require a lot of output of energy. Uh, so just on a regular day, uh, going to work and, and kind of just doing my thing, not on trail and not any heavy exercise, would be um, 60, 70, and 70 carbs. So I would have 60 car or no more than 60 carbs at breakfast, no more than 70 carbs at lunch, and no more than 70 carbs at supper. And if I have a snack through the course of the day, that would take some of those carbs, those carbs would have to come from the 60, 70, or 70. Uh, I can't just add some extra carbs in there in the, in the middle of the day. It would have to come from those, um, f from those amounts of carbs that I'm allowed to have through the course of the day. Now, when, I, when I'm planning meals on trail, I try to stick to the 60, 70, 70, but because I'm taking insulin and now I've got this extra output of energy, uh, and this is something I got uh, from my doctor. I, I had a conversation with him, and keep in mind, this is not advice he was giving to all diabetics. This is advice he was giving to me. So again, if you're having uh, some of these kinds of issues, you need to talk to your doctor about your situation. But what he advised me was, 
uh, on these days where I have this high energy output, I'm hiking, I'm backpacking, through the course of the day, I need to increase my uh, caloric intake. Uh, and and the, the number he gave me uh, was about 100 calories per hour of activity. Now, if I stop and take lunch, I'm not going to count that hour. Uh, plus, I'm having lunch. So, uh, but he, he said that all of those calories didn't have to be carbohydrates. That some of those calories could be proteins and fats. He said that actually they need to be. So when I have a when I have a snack, the the breakdown needs to be and and the suggestion he gave me was about 60 40, 60 percent carbs to 40 percent proteins and fats. Um, and he said he said even if you go in the direction of more 50 50, he said that's good, probably even better. Uh, and, and what I have discovered now is that by having those snacks through the day helps keep my energy level up just like it would for anybody else, except that I have to be a little bit more conscious about, um, about what I'm eating and the frequency that I'm eating and uh, not eating all of that all at once. It's kind of, it kind of has to be spread out through the course of the day. Uh, the, the joke I've had, uh, it's not really a joke, it's... Sadly, it's kind of real. Um, I've had people ask me, well, can you, as a diabetic, can you have a Snickers bar? And my joke is always, well, yeah, I can have a Snickers bar. It just takes me three days to eat it. Uh, now, when I'm on the trail, that's not the case. When I'm on the trail, yeah, I can have a Snickers bar, but what I need to do is eat about half of it, wait a half an hour, and eat the other half of it. Now, that's provided I'm continuously moving. Just don't eat all of that all at once, because that would be kind of a lot. As backpackers, we, we know that we should take an emergency meal or emergency food. Um, if, if we plan our food out just right and we show up to the trailhead with zero calories in our pack and we're satisfied, we're not just dying to go eat, then you know we've, we've probably planned it just right. The problem that a diabetic has is that it's difficult to plan that just right because with the uh, insulin that I'm having to take on board every day and the, the kind of output that I have, um, I really don't know uh, for sure what kind of reaction I'm going to have based on the kind of um, the kind of exercise that I'm doing. Of course, we, we know what kind of exercise I'm doing, but it's, it's difficult to calculate that scientifically and know exactly how many calories that I have to have. So I end up bringing extra food. Um, you know, we say that we pack our fears, and in this case, the fear of being out there and not having the food when I need it is a, is a, not just for me, for me, it's not just a fear, it's a danger. Uh, so I end up packing a couple of extra meals. When I show up to the, to the trailhead at the end of a hike, I usually have those extra meals still with me. Um, it, it's only been rarely that I've, I've gotten into my emergency food, but I do, do take emergency food. One of the suggestions that my doctor gave me for the emergency food, uh, and, and what I described to him was this, that I, I have all of this energy output through the course of the day, and then it comes nighttime, I take my medication, I take my insulin, I go to bed, and then I wake up at about one in the morning just ravenous, I just going through my food bag and consuming all of it because my sugar has dropped. Um, I've kind of bottomed out and I'm just uh, sucking up all the, all the calories I have in my bag. That's bad because that messes up my meals for the remainder of the trip. So his suggestion was that when I have um, that, that I, I take as one of my emergency foods, just some gummies. And so if I bottom out in the middle of the night, I can take um, just a, a few of the gummies. In fact, I've got this for a, a weekend trip that I'm doing this weekend. Um, but I can have uh, a handful of these gummies that'll get my sugar back up and I can go right back to sleep and I haven't gotten into my, my you know, lunches for the next day and that kind of thing. Um, and so uh, that was his recommendation. I've done it once and it proved to be exactly what it was that I needed. Um, because I've also had trips where I did exactly what I described, where in the middle of the night I was getting into the food that I needed for the next day or for the next couple of days, and it just created um, a problem with meal planning uh, for the remainder of the trip. And so um, this is my solution. So here's my question for you. 
how do you handle your health issues on the trail? What do you do that's a little bit different from other folks, other hikers, uh, in order to take care of yourself on the trail? Um, discuss in the comments below. Now, thanks for watching, and if this has been any help at all for, for diabetics, non-diabetics, whoever, um, hit the like button, and if you're interested in the kind of uh, material that I'm putting out there, subscribe.